All right, guys, so the new dungeon is here, and I want to talk about the drop rates. So big shout out to GB in the Discord for sending me over his runs on stage 30. I did 200 runs on stage 20, 92 runs on stage 24, and then he did 100 runs on stage 30. Now, I want to say, first off, this data isn't going to be 100% accurate. You heard the sample size. It's not massive. The Hell Hades website, I imagine it's going to have the more accurate drop rates very, very soon. But with this information, you can make educated decisions on where you actually want to be farming, if you want to be farming it at all. Now, the sheet that I'm going to be sharing is very colorful. Compare this to the notes that I took right here. Let me know what you guys like more. Do you prefer the notepad or the Google Sheets? Speaking of, I'm going to leak link the google sheets down below in case you want to copy this i think i already know the answer this is far far better now when we're looking at this actually i'll go into the uh the pros and cons of this in just a moment because i think there's actually quite a bit of pros and i think i will be farming it i initially said that this is horrible because of the sets involved are just garbage everything except for pinpoint and crit damage but mostly pinpoint that's what we're here for everything else is basically going to be sold and I expected the drop rates to be essentially one, two, three, four, five, six. I expected it to be one out of six drop rate for pinpoint, which is about a 16% chance. So one out of six would be a 16, let's call it 17% chance of getting pinpoint pieces. Now I assumed it would be 17% chance to get pinpoint and then a 50% chance for it to be an artifact or an accessory. That is not the case whatsoever. So if we look at the actual information. We have stage 20. 200 runs, 3,200 energy. We got 10.5% pinpoint artifacts, 28% accessories. These are only pinpoint accessories. Nothing else dropped as far as accessories. You can see this was consistent across stage 20 and stage 24. But then with GB's runs, we got 40% accessories, which is crazy to me. And that's not 40% of just the pinpoint stuff. That's 40% of the total drops. Now, with the non-pinpoint pieces, which was just the regular artifacts, the ones are just going to be sold, basically. All these sets, maybe you keep some, but majority of it's going to be just wasted stuff. 61.5% on stage 20, 60% on stage 24, and then 50% on stage 30. So with stage 30 runs, it could have just been his account, could have just been good luck, who knows, but he had an even split of 50% pinpoint and 50% non-pinpoint. And then on stage 20... For six stars specifically, this is where things I was kind of curious about. So on stage 20, we have a 28% chance for six star pieces, a 72% chance for five star pieces, and you can see the rest of them for stage 24 as well as stage 30. And if we come over here, compare these numbers, these uh, ones in this like gray type color, to these numbers over here. You can see normal spider, just what I use for comparison, on stage 20, it's going to be a 25.74% chance for six star pieces. On the event dungeon, it's a 28% chance. Very, very close to being lined up. Now, these normal drop rates are from the Hell Hades website. These are accurate. Mine, relatively small sample size, is actually pretty close to these numbers. So I believe it is safe to say that the actual six star and five star drop rates for stage 20 is going to be 25.74% chance for a 6 star and a 73% chance for a 5 star. Same thing with stage 24. Very close, granted a little bit further spread than the other one, but this was only 92 runs, but it's still 35.8 and 65 there. So very close. I think it's close enough to say, hey, that is accurate. That's probably what it's going to be. And then from GB's runs, we have stage 30. We have 38% chance for 6 star. If you look at the heart, the... um. Hard mode spider, it's a 32% chance for six star or a 62% chance for five star in the event and a 68% chance in normal dungeon content. Now, I believe this is probably just he got really lucky. He may have even gotten lucky with the pinpoint and non pinpoint split. But something to consider is that hard spider is actually would be the equivalent of the event dungeon stage 35 right? Because we have 25 normal stages plus 10, it'd be 35. So this, you would expect to actually be lower and maybe more along the lines of like stage five hard, but this is actually better drop rates than the hard mode. It's not even equivalent, the, the, the higher stage on hard mode essentially. But I'm just going to assume that this is probably going to line up more with these numbers. But if not, this is actually a very solid drop rate for six star pieces and five star pieces. Now, as far as the Energy per pinpoint piece, that's what this energy slash PP piece is, 
Well, it was 40 energy per pinpoint piece for stage 30, 44 energy for stage 24, and you, got, you guys can see the rest. And then energy per six star, well, the best one was stage 24, but stage 30 wasn't far behind, and then stage 20, of course, was the lowest. Of course, you're gonna get the most amount of gear per energy spent on stage 20, essentially because, you know, 16 energy per run versus 20 energy per run. But if you're looking for higher quality gear, like always, stage 30, the higher stages are gonna be the best. And honestly, here, it's not even as comparable as the dungeons because this just seems like stage 30 is quite a bit better. If these were the actual drop rates, and like this is that accurate, I don't really know because he could just have great RNG. If you have more information, let me know. I can plug it in here as well. But these rates are fantastic. Essentially what's happening is you're getting 50% drop rates for pinpoint, 50% for non-pinpoint, and of those 50% pinpoint pieces you're getting, 40% are gonna be accessories. This is actually really good because accessories are gonna be the place where you're getting the biggest upgrades. So let's talk about the pinpoint set a little bit, specifically the accessories. So just new, got a pinpoint piece right here. So we come in here and see what bonuses does it give? Well, set one, one piece, it's gonna give 20 accuracy. Two piece is gonna give plus 10% speed. Three piece is gonna give plus 20 accuracy. The reason why this is important is because you can have three accessories, okay? Three accessories, if you put just a ring and a necklace, you're getting a two-piece bonus, which means you're going to get a plus 10% speed. That is huge. You're pulling speed from something that has no possibility of getting speed. For my Siffy in this case, that is an extra 14 speed from a piece that should never even give in speed to begin with. Protection is very similar in this case. However, protection doesn't give you quite as easy access to speed. For protection, you need a three-piece bonus. Granted, you can probably get a little bit more. You get some from Hydra. You get some from, actually, no, you don't get very much protection at all. You probably have more protection gear, whether it's the artifacts or the accessories in your account, but Pinpoint is gonna be far easier to actually finish some sets of. And you could even go, okay, two pieces of Pinpoint. We have a protection, one, two, three. So you have a protection accessory, and then two pieces up there, you get a 12% speed, and then finish off the rest with like two more speed sets. And you're gonna have, what, 12%? plus 10%, plus 24%, so 22, 46%, something like that. I don't know. It's a lot of percentage of speed just from the pieces, not even counting your speed rolls. So Pinpoint, I strongly believe, is going to be crucial to have at least the accessories on your champions you want to be fast. But even if we take a look at my Armands, my Armands is a champion who doesn't have an accuracy banner. I would love to throw an accuracy banner on him. So let's see, do I have any accuracy banners? Unfortunately, I don't have that many. But if I was able to get one from the pinpoint set, which is far more likely to get than getting a stone skin accessory, that is a banner for barbarians with speed and accuracy as the main set at, pinpoints can be far easier to get. So for now, this is an example. Let's say I put on this accuracy banner. It's going to give them an extra 96 accuracy and a little bit of speed. Now, if we go to the necklace and ring, the necklace is also, well, this uh, two-piece combo, if I do both of them, is going to give me an extra 20 accuracy. Now, the necklace could roll more accuracy. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But either way, we're going to get a definite amount of accuracy. So put these two pieces on. I lose a little bit of accuracy swapping that necklace, but it's not that big of a deal. If it actually rolled accuracy, this would be very good. So now he's 361 speed, and we have... A pretty solid build overall. Let's go for some priority stats speed. Let's go for equipped. Just see like an idea of what my Armands could be if I was to do this swap. Now we are going to lose the perception set bonus here, unfortunately. But let's say with 353, 668. So we gained 10 speed. Lost a little bit of accuracy, but these aren't the ideal build. This isn't the ideal build for him. I could change up some more and probably get it to be even better. But just the pinpoint accessories are going to be an easy, easy boost to speeds on all your champions. Now, this isn't even considering if you're a newer, earlier game player, you're able to push to stage 20, which is probably not too far out of your imagination, right? Stage 20 isn't super difficult. We have some side people, but honestly, you can, you may be able to just nuke it down. It's achievable, basically. So what you're going to be able to do there is say we have an apothecary, for example. An apothecary, you are pushing into 200 speed. You're kind of having a hard time getting some speed pieces. You just come in here. You find your pinpoint stuff. It doesn't even have to be good. It can literally be garbage to your accessories. That's okay. But your apothecary now all of a sudden has plus 10 speed, 
just from a new ring and a new accessory. That accessory being a necklace, ideally. The banner is going to give a bunch of speed, but you may not have excellent banners with good speed rolls. However, I actually did roll a pretty decent banner for Lydia, but it, well, it was attack banner, so I don't really need that, but the double roll speed is nice. 17 speed on this banner. If I have a Dark Elf needing that, that's actually a really good roll. That is better than even a triple roll potentially in some other pieces just because of its accessibility to get the extra sets, the set stat bonuses essentially. Now, that's just the one to two pieces that we're really talking about here. And you get to four pieces and five pieces, you start to get even more benefits. This is going to be getting into a little bit different stuff. At that point, we're probably looking at more like ramen two. Okay, we want to stop the polymorph from coming through, everything like that. So at this point, we're coming in. All right, we're going to go for pinpoint. We're looking for some speed and accuracy. Let's see, does this roll speed? Maybe be sweet if it did. Six star, rare, I don't really care. Double roll speed. That is incredible. It's not accuracy banner, but that is not a huge deal either. Because at this point, what I could do is, all right, let's see if we got any protection pieces. Do I have any protection pieces whatsoever? I do. I have a necklace. So I'll throw the necklace right there. We'll throw a ring right there, just as an idea. And now, if we can go and get priority stats, speed, we're going to come down to protection. Um, I may want to get some more pinpoint stuff as well, like a four-piece pinpoint set, set. Let's go some boots. I didn't great, get great pieces at all, unfortunately. Do I? I know I got some speed boots. I, I literally, okay, yeah. It's like, I know for sure I got some speed boots from this stuff. If you get some six-star speed boots, these are going to be amazing as well. If it rolls speed, that'd be pretty nice. Doesn't roll speed. That's okay, though. So we'll throw that on there. So now we got three-piece. Pick up the four-piece. We'll be looking pretty decent. We got a double roll there. So we got a four-piece, okay? So we got four pieces of pinpoint. So we're going to get the bonus of intercept stack. And now we come in here, and we look for some protection pieces. At least three more pieces, or one, two, three. So two more pieces, and we can pick up a, uh, a feral set. There's all kinds of sets we can start going in from this point, basically. So I want an accuracy chest plate with protection set. There we go. This is the one I was looking for. Quad roll speed. We have, now we have speed, protection set, triple roll, boom. So now we got triple roll speed there, looking very solid. We have two more pieces, 295 speed already with pretty decent accuracy, but I want it to be even better accuracy. So now if we could go to feral, if I had any decent feral gear, I could throw that on him. I don't have anything very good in Feral, honestly. I have some okay pieces, but what I do have that's good is some good perception stuff. So let's take Basher's helmet, theoretically, and then this piece. So now we're looking at a 438 accuracy Ramen 2 with 328 speed plus an intercept stack. That's not too bad, honestly. Like He's looking pretty good. Now we could get this to be extra 12 speed, boosting him up to 340 speed. So now he's looking pretty daggone fast with plenty of glyph room to go as well. We have eight glyphs that could, or a total of eight that could be glyphed there. We have eight that could be glyphed there. We have some glyphs that could happen there. So we're easily pushing 350, 360 with okay accuracy. Granted, this would be better as an accuracy banner, of course, but these are just some ideas. So basically, with this dungeon, my initial thoughts were, okay, this is horrible. The other sets being included in here are just trash, but... For an account where I'm at, I actually think, assuming this is going to be working for like Dungeon Diver events and stuff, that'd be awesome. Uh, we have the Asgardian Path event. We have some Deck of Fates come up, I think, soon as well. But if this stuff works towards like Dungeon Diver things, then I will definitely be farming this dungeon and quite a bit. Because if I do any of these four for my account and game account, these are mostly going to give me trash pieces. There's a few sets I need. But it's mostly going to be trash. Mostly going to be trash. Everything's mostly going to be trash. This, with the drop rates being 60-40, 60% being trash, 40% being pinpoint, which a lot of it's probably going to be trash as well, or possibly 50-50 split on stage 30, if it's accurate, this makes more than enough sense for me to do this, specifically for the fact that we have such a high chance of getting the accessories, which I believe are just the most valuable part of this. Accessories are difficult to get. Protection. I'm comparing it to protection a lot. Protection accessories are difficult to get. Getting the 9 piece set bonuses to start up on the accessories are difficult. So, all the 9 piece potential sets supersonic, merciless, stone skin, protection, all that stuff is difficult 
to specifically get the accessories. But with this, it's going to be a lot easier because you're going to be able to run this a lot and get a very good, healthy drop rate of those accessories specifically. Picture this as like a, a spider farm somewhat. So for me, spider farming, it's going to make more silver, but a lot of this stuff's going to be sold. Very rarely do I keep spider pieces, but it does happen. Here, I'm going to be keeping more pieces than I would from spider, but a lot of it's going to be sold. But this is definitely where I will be spending my energy. I think it's honestly a solid place to be farming. Unfortunately, these pieces up here are just trash. If they would have added, like even for early game players, they're garbage. That's like the kind of the conflict. The Well, not even kind of. I mean, if they would have had like speed, toxic. Like if you want to tailor it to early game players, throw in sets that are early game friendly. Like even lifesteal. Lifesteal, toxic. Other sets that would actually be used. Um... Savage would be crazy. I can see why they wouldn't have added the best sets in here. These ones are just the worst sets. So my opinions on this dungeon are essentially, I like the idea. I think this is a very good dungeon setup. I think that they have a very good breakdown of how much pinpoint you get. But I don't think these are very good at all. If they drop this out, this dungeon would be incredible. It'd be an awesome event dungeon. I could be super excited for it. With these being in here though, I'm not as excited for it. I'm really not. Maybe it's because, maybe I'm not as upset because I'm so used to selling so much of my gear anyways. And a normal player who's like, you know, trying to progress and everything may feel it a lot more wasting the energy. But for me, I think this does make sense. Actually, I know it makes sense, especially because of the drop rate, the split. The split seems very solid in my opinion on how much pinpoint, how much um, non-pinpoint you're getting. So basically it's a 60-40 split, except for on stage 30. I'm still interested in if this is actually just good RNG on his part, or if this is actually how it worked out. Because 60-40, that is good. Oh, sorry, 50-50. 50-50 is very good. That is very solid. Every run, hey, one run's going to be non-pinpoint. It's going to be trash. One run's going to be pinpoint, which is quite possibly not going to be trash. I mean, you pick up a few pieces that roll into speed on pinpoint you pick up a few six star speed boots get those to roll into speed ascension you're looking at some solid solid speed stats for your champions honestly let's see what this goes into it's five star it's not great but hey you get it to be an extra what is it nine speed plus the 10 uh, bonus you get there there's a lot of potential things you can get to start working with this setup a six piece is possible as well you go uh two pieces down here or even three three up here which may be kind of weird to do, um, but you could go two and four and still have a two-piece set up here. All kinds of different things you could do. You could do two and four and then three-piece protection. There's a lot of different things you could do to have some awesome, awesome combinations. So guys, let me know what you think. I was wanting to share this with you guys so you could decide which place is going to be best for you to farm. Ultimately, stage 30, I mean, it's kind of expected, honestly, but stage 30 is going to be just the best, is what I would recommend. And unless this proves to be incorrect, it's quite a bit the best. Like, this is, is so good, these numbers. But honestly, stage 20 and stage 24, if you can do it, I would recommend doing it enough to give to get yourself a decent stockpile of accessories because I really think you'll use it on quite a few champions, especially if you're more early to mid game. I'll show you the teams that I use real quick. The team on stage 30 was this one right here. Uh, it's not very successful though. I'm not gonna show it because I'm not gonna actually run it because it was kind of weird. Stage 24, the team that I used was essentially just Cardiel, Ramen, oh, sorry, Cardiel, Tervold, Georgid. It was just like a blow it up really quick team. Just using Georgid, using Tervold, just blow it up. I don't want to do the runs because it's not going to be so much a showcase for that. I don't think they're necessarily the best teams to use anyways, but it's just what I was doing. I'm going to tweak this team, fine tune it, maybe do a video if you guys want to see it, but I'll show you. Let me, let me take out Lydia real quick. Put in Ghostborn for the 100% chance at decreased defense. And then we'll see how this works. We, we lose a buff, unfortunately, but I want to see how well or not this works. So we have increased attack. The Seer kill everything. I don't know. She does, in fact, kill everything. We have the decreased defense up. Ghostborn's doing his thing. All right. So my, well, actually, Lydia is very important here because what she does is she prevents the res, which means that a Thorion, well, she prevents the res. So she is actually pretty huge for here. The res being blocked and just res my champions is very helpful. 
if I had some like um, brimstone champions or something along those lines, it'd be nice. But we will die. We will start lose champions. It's not a huge deal with Lydia. It's a big deal with uh, Ghostborn though. So not going to be successful here. I can go ahead and tell you that for sure. For like 90% sure. Let's see. He's going to kill uh, Newt. Going to res somebody. If Lydia was here, it would have been a res on my Newt plus my Authorion. So I'm going to tweak this team. Get something more consistent and better, stronger working. Maybe even use a uh, ninja instead of a newt over there, possibly. But either way, guys, thank you all for watching. Let me know what your opinions are on this event. If you're going to go for it, if you're just going to skip it, I appreciate it. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.